everyone quiet on the set places places we've got a show to make here are Chris and Gabriel they are okay everyone in three two one and coming to you live from sunny Orlando Florida it's the great movie radio show a movie talk podcast starring Chris and Gabe. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Great Movie Radio Show. Chris here, and of course, as always, my lovely uh, co-host Gabe. What's up, buddy? Oh, you think I'm lovely? Uh, at least for now. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, man? I'm good. I'm good. You know, slowly getting back to work and you know figuring this whole thing out. It's it's been weird. I you know I know we've had a couple uh, weeks off since we really recorded anything, so I'm excited to get back into the grind. I feel you, man. It's uh, it to go from nothing to to doing things often is, uh, it, it's a big change, and I uh, I miss doing nothing sometimes. I really I, do. I feel you. I'm like always exhausted now and feel like a girl. Oh, you feel like well, you look like one. So, uh, wow. <laughs> Make sure you stick around at the end of the show. We have an additional segment uh, with the gang who are bringing us the Great Movie Ride Quarantine Edition. Uh, This is a really fun film project that a lot of movie writers, including myself, uh, contributed to over the course of the quarantine uh, situation with COVID-19. It's a really fun video project that a lot of us... uh, put time into and the gang who have orchestrated this project uh, are going to chat with us a little bit about what went into it. So stick around. But first, Gabe and I were recently on the Universal Disney Nuts podcast. If you haven't heard that episode uh, or of them, we've put out some of their um, blogs and work on our Facebook and website. They are... um, company that I believe helps with vacation planning and just keeping the fandom of the theme parks in in the Orlando area and we were fortunate enough to be asked to be on their podcast and in return we were forced against our will to have Jennifer Piccioni on our show we were told you can be on ours but we have to be on yours so Jennifer is here gee thanks I'm just kidding Uh, Jennifer it is Way to make her feel welcome. I know, right? That's it. I'm done. Goodbye. Headphones off. Oh, no, no, That was the equivalent of, uh, you know, saying in action at the end and nobody clapping for you. Right, right. Right, exactly. Well, well, to be fair, Bill did say we had to give you a little bit of trouble, so we're doing this for the sake of Bill. So you can can get on him later. That's uh, okay. His wife and I cooked up a surprise for him, so I'm going to do that. Now, will he know about the surprise by the no. time this is out, or will? Okay, so this is this is a warning, I guess we'll say. Yes. Bill, she's Bill, she's coming after you, man. Be careful. <laughs> well, Jennifer, uh, thanks for being on the show. We really do appreciate you coming on. Well, um, thank you for having me. Regardless of the connection to Universal Disney Nuts, you were a movie writer, and I that is the was. that is the real reason we have you on is because <laughs> you were of the uh, the great movie ride tenure. It's uh, wonderful to have you on, and uh, we'll we'll uh, cut right to it. What did you do at Movie Ride? <laughs> I did a little bit of everything. Um, I was tour guide and I was also bandit. I never got to do the gangster role because that was not a female role at the time that I worked there. And then from there, I transferred to Epcot after I worked there for a few years. So um, I was there probably about three years. When about were you there? 94 to 97. 94 to 97. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was going to say, because, yeah, I, I mean, I got there in like 2013 or so. So I had never known that uh, the the females weren't allowed to be a gangster for a while. Is that that that's a thing? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Roxy yeah, did not exist that. when I was there. Huh. I had no idea. Yeah. Fair enough. 
Well, uh, you learn something new every day, and there I learn that. There you go. I, somebody <laughs> probably told me years ago, and I just somehow forgot it, because that's just what happens with me, so who knows. <laughs> Age. <laughs> uh, yeah, right? Pretty much. Did you uh, Did you have a favorite section of Movie Ride? Um, You know, the whole ride itself is awesome, and it's hard to say, well, this one's better than the other, but I have to say Finale was probably what I liked the most, because I just loved watching the movie clips. To be in that big circle vision kind of screen and the sound blared at you is awesome. I agree. I, I, I love the fact that you're rolling in to Finale, it felt like a movie theater almost because you know, everyone's in their seats and everyone's sitting there together. <laughs> And it felt like a like a you know traveling movie theater almost. It was kind of cool. Yeah. See, it was yeah. a little different for me because I'd always roll into the finale, and I, you know, with the old script before TCM, I'd go, "Did I spiel at all since I got back from Anubis?" And then that's, <laughs> that's that's when it would hit me. The the movies would start, and I go, "I don't remember if I did anything at all since then." <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, you did just have to talk to the witch, technically, so... Maybe well, yeah, I don't even remember that. Do that. You don't? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gabe. Gabe, Gabe, Gabe. Uh, <laughs> do, you, do you have anything to ask her, Gabe, about Movie Ride? Uh, yeah, so we'll just move on to the next part. Um, obviously, uh, Movie Ride is known for making memories, whether you work there or not, uh, came as a guest. Um shortly because obviously there's a lot of memories you could bring up but mm -hmm. uh talk about some of your favorite memories of working at the ride oh my gosh <laughs> you know you guys know from working there that 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 becomes quite a unique unique family of friends that mm -hmm. you create and i think the biggest camaraderie was the pranking with each other <laughs> yes and, oh man i mean there are times where I know we should have gotten fired for what we did, but we did it anyhow. A lot of it Same. that I remember is rolling into Bandit when I was the A vehicle and half of the Bandits would be sitting in different poses all throughout the land instead of backstage <laughs> behind the bank. I think I talked about like doing pranks like that on your guys' podcast. Yeah, you, you did. Yeah, you I did. did. I and did. It, oh. I just started laughing. I was like, oh my <laughs> gosh, I remember that. Or when you were rolling into um, Finale and the guys would be going to clean their guns when they would get off their shift and they would smack the back of the vehicles as they walked by and scare the piss out of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So I, didn't, I, didn't I, have, think... I didn't have that one happen. No. Yeah, we didn't have that. By that point, they didn't they didn't clean it there. Like we had a whole room. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. CDC, and that's where they cleaned their guns. They didn't have to go. Yeah. Away. When we got off our ships, we had to walk halfway through the back of the ride and then come out in the back side of finale into the maintenance bay to clean our guns. Oh man. Oof. Yeah. So it, definitely, you guys experienced a new and better GMR. The old one was. <laughs> Had a lot of kinks, but it was Listen, a lot I, of fun. I just, I just wish I was there when they were wearing suspenders and bow ties. That's the only thing I wish. Oh yeah. Wish. <laughs> um, yeah, that that was a good costume. Yeah. Um, and then obviously, I mean, you worked it for three years, and we talked about how close knit of a family it is working mm -hmm. there. Are there any uh, cast members or trainers or anybody that you remember that you just want to give a shout out to on our podcast? Um, you know, I have. The one thing I like the most about working there, the people that are my friends now are the people that I was friends with 20 years ago. And um, there were a couple of people that we were thick as thieves. And, you know, we were the ones that were always cutting up and getting the look when we were pulling back into the loading dock, like we saw what you did kind of thing. Um, Gabriel McLeod and Mike Mastercola, they were awesome people to work with. I think Gabriel is now over at Disney Springs and Mike works for Universal, but I mean, we were like all best friends and we were the ones that were always cutting up and causing trouble. It's funny. Cause like when you send it in, like everybody, when I first started at movie, they're like, Oh, they're like, listen, there was another Gabriel that work here and you have a lot to live up to now. Now that you're <laughs> yes. here and you're Gabriel. And I'm like, uh, uh, okay. <laughs> Gabe was unique. Definitely. I mean, he was like a modern day Elvis Presley. He had a very old soul 
and he just was he was a trip i mean he called all the girls darling and you know he was he's hilarious oh see i was with the same oh we're alike because everybody said i was unique but not for those reasons <laughs> oh no <laughs> <laughs> no not that i like you know didn't call girls darling or anything but i was very unique and i just goofed around a lot yep you did well that was the good thing about that ride though that's all we did was goof around pretty much uh oh, we did it for the sake of the guests though absolutely and they didn't even know it half the time <laughs> And now, it's time for Top 5. Jennifer, we're going to talk about your top five favorite films of all time. Okay. And uh, your first one is the 1939 Gone with the Wind. Yes, I with love that movie. Clark Gable, Vivian Lee. What about <clears throat> Gone with the Wind makes it your absolute favorite? Um, well, just the movie itself. And at that time, it was such a modern movie for that age. And so much was put into filming that movie. But it's also just, if I could have been in another era, that would have been the era I would have been in. And it's just, something about it just gives me chills every time I watch it. Whether it's her sitting outside at the barbecue or it's Clark Gable carrying her down the stairs, you know, like in finale with a bottle, you know. So it's just, it's just, it's an intense movie, but man, it's, there's just something that makes you think, wow, those were the days. It's the romanticism of it. I think so, yeah. Oh, very good. Uh, what do you have like a you know do you have like a favorite scene of Gone with the Wind? I uh, it's been a while since I've seen it. Long um, while. I think my favorite scene is <laughs> when the maid says, "I don't know nothing about birth and no babies." <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't know that one because I haven't seen it so oh, long. You watch it. But uh, basically. I've got it. I think I got it on Black Friday for like two bucks and like a oh, like a DVD bin or something. It. You gotta watch it. Oh, it's it's, it's just, I I grew up in Georgia and it's a big you know big thing of the history yes. of the Civil War. But I you know I I kind of fell out of that stuff growing up, so I I just haven't seen it in so long. I respect the cinematic aspects of it. Yeah, for sure. Next favorite movie is uh from t- two thousand six. I almost said twenty sixteen. Uh, Nancy <laughs> Myers directed The Holiday. Uh, starring Kate Winslet, Cameron Diaz, Jude Law, and Jack Black. What about this movie makes it a favorite? Um, well, I really connected with Kate Winslet's character. Um, I was in a situation a long time ago. Actually, it was while I was working at the movie ride where I was in love with someone who was a very, very close friend of mine, and it just wasn't reciprocated in the way. And... Um, I just really connected with her character. Plus, I think Kate Winslet is a fantastic actress, and I would watch her in just about anything. Other than that, it's the music. I would sit there and just listen to the music a lot of the time and not even pay attention to the movie itself. I just think it has a terrific score. Well, it's Hans Zimmer, so of course. Of course. (laughs) He's one of the best. You love... You saying you love Kate Winslet and will watch her in anything. Did you get a chance to see uh, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind? I did. Oh, that movie breaks my heart every time I yeah. see it. And I watched one the other day. Something Chaos. I can't remember what it was. Total, uh, the beginning of Chaos. I don't know. I don't know. I gotta figure it out. But it was I don't, really good, yeah. too. I don't follow her uh, her library much, but... Uh, let me see. I'm, I'm scrolling it real quick. It's called A Little Chaos. A Little Chaos. Oh, I see yeah. it right here. Uh, Alan Rickman directed mm-hmm. it. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, it's a good movie. It's interesting. You really have to listen because it's one of those where it's very soft-spoken. And you can miss a key part of it very quickly. But it was a really good movie. Awesome. I'll have to check that one out. Yeah. 
And I, I, I was going to say your top five favorite films have a trend with the romanticism. I, I noticed there's yes. a little bit of romance in all of them. Uh, there is. Your, your next one being <laughs> the live action version of Beauty and the Beast, not the animated one. Yes, the animated used to be, but then when I saw Beauty and the Beast live action, it blew me away. My mom was a huge Beauty and the Beast fan, and she was already passed when this came out, and I literally bawled when that movie was over. I was like, oh my God, she would have loved this movie. But I just, what we can do these days with movies and technology to make that come into being the way they did is mm -hmm. just phenomenal. I still haven't seen it. Oh my gosh. I know, I need to. <laughs> the, and I know, I know. Gone and with the Wind, Beauty and the Beast. What, what's next? I I've know, seen seriously. Gone with the Wind before and I've seen the old Beauty and the Beast. I just... <laughs> Please tell me you've seen the other two movies on my list. I have seen Singing in the okay. Rain and I probably have seen White Christmas probably <laughs> during my childhood and just don't remember it. Probably. Probably. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I know, I know. And I'm hosting a movie podcast. Go I ahead, know, jump on the train. On. Jump on the train. <laughs> whatever, whatever. Choo-choo. No. Choo -choo. <laughs> <laughs> Gabe's driving and I'm tied to the railroad tracks. That's what's happening. Yikes. I checked oh. in and I'm, and I'm shifting into four. Let's oh, go. Oh, God. <laughs> Just, as long as I'm not laying on the track of what used to be movie Ryan and it's that train, I'm good, okay? Right. I'm sorry, I had to put that out there. Uh, Have you you're... been on that ride since that um, happened? No. I haven't been to... I haven't been to Hollywood Studios probably since Galaxy's Edge was just about really? to open. That is the yeah. last time I've been. I did a cast preview... Uh, and so I haven't got to do Rise, or I haven't seen any of the updates, and, and that's okay. It's probably probably better that way because uh, yeah. you know the world is uh, yeah, the world's on fire. So yeah. uh, <laughs> you're <laughs> we're gonna go to your next movie and not talk about that. I'm assuming you were talking about the 1954 Michael Curtiz, as Dave Fesky once corrected me on my my I called him Curtis, <laughs> and he said Curtiz, and I was like, well. I, Mom just, you know, mom just said, say it how it's spelled, but, uh, the 1954 White Christmas yes. is your next yes. favorite movie with Bing Crosby. Yes, I, I just, that movie just encompasses Christmas, first of all, which is my favorite holiday ever. But again, it kind of goes with what I was saying about Gone with the Wind. If I could have been anywhere, I would have wanted to have been in Hollywood during that time when that was filmed. I just think that was a classic era. And I just, the whole movie itself just makes you feel good. I mean, yes, I get teary eyed at the end, you know, and everybody's all happy and but it's just, it's a beautiful movie and I love the singing and I, I think Danny Kaye is hilarious. <clears throat> Danny Kaye is splendid. Oh my gosh. Splendid, splendid, I say. Uh, <laughs> and your uh, your number five is uh, one that I have been I have been meaning to revisit this movie for so long. Mm -hmm. And I just I haven't and I need to because it's it's wonderful. I found a, a two disc like special edition DVD recently. Oh wow. And I've been meaning to just jump in <clears throat> and dive and watch the whole shebang, but I, I just, you know. Too many things to do, too little time. Yeah, it's one of my son's favorite movies. Really? Yes. How, how old's your son? Twelve. And he loves singing in the rain. He walks around singing, good morning, good morning. <laughs> You're doing good. The 1952 Gene Kelly led mm -hmm. singing in the rain. And that rounds out your top five. What about yes. that one? Uh, you know, makes your makes you have a good morning. Um, I grew up on that movie. I remember watching it with my grandmother. I remember watching it with my mom. And it's my go-to if I just want to, I don't want to turn the TV on, but I want to watch something that makes me happy. That's the movie. Again, it goes back to that whole filming era of Hollywood during that time. And I love Gene Kelly. Um, I just, I, everything about it makes me happy in that movie. Gotcha. It's a feel, it's the feel good movie of the generation. Absolutely. <laughs> well, that is a pretty solid uh, top five, and I have seen. Been, I'm able to say that I have seen two of them. <laughs> Gabe, the what about a, when you need it? <laughs> right, right. Kick me off my okay. show, Gabe. What about you? Have you? Uh, what have you seen of this? I've seen 
four out of the five. Oh wow! Wow, yeah, which one they, haven't you, you seen? Sh- I haven't seen White Christmas. <gasps> really? Yeah, and it's so weird. Like I've seen like little you know pieces and stuff like that, but never like, and it's no more than like a minute when in passing. But yeah, huh. I've never seen it. And usually, and it's weird because usually on this podcast it's reverse. Like Chris has seen all these movies, and I'm just like, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, that's, for sure. I'm letting you. That's, that's I'm, my go-to for sure. I'm letting you soak this one in, dude. You deserve it. You, <laughs> nice. You, you get a win this time. I'll just sit back here and look like a loser. <laughs> loser. <laughs> to her. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's us. It's time to go around the track. Ready when you are, CB. So, uh, Gabe yeah, is going to be your tour guide for Around yeah, the yeah, Track, yeah. and yeah, sure. I uh, am going to be uh, I'm going to be Bandit this round. So I'll come in, I'll come and take over after Western, and then you can uh, you can uh, kick me off when we get to the horror <laughs> of things. So, uh, Gabe, you want to you want to take us take us away? Yeah. Awesome. Let's go! Hooray for Hollywood! All right, cool. So now it's I, th- I would say, I want to say it's everybody's favorite part of the podcast when we go around the track and uh, dive into each genre and talk about your favorite movies All and right. uh, what we would <clears throat> replace it with per se. And you know, and this is. You know, the idea is we have all the money in the world, all the Imagineers are focusing on us, and we're going to change each scene to cater you. Brian Collins has come out of retirement to help us rebuild <laughs> DMR. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. He's he's come out. It's going to be great. Um, so, yeah. So let's jump on that vehicle, and we're going to dive Sweet. right into musical. And I love your choice because it was also my top choice in musical Phantom of the Opera. Oh, um, now, right. which... Which, are you talking about, like, the old, like, you know, silent film Phantom of the Opera? Or are you talking about, like, Gerard Butler, the musical? Like, um, uh, I would say Gerard Butler. I mean, yeah. I, I was kind of skeptical when I first found out he was playing the Phantom in that movie. But, man, he knocked it out of the park. Yeah, for sure. And it was funny because <clears throat> you found out before. It's one of my favorite musicals, like, mm-hmm. period. And I didn't know until, like, months after. Somebody's like, yeah, oh, that's, you know, the guy from 300. And I went, excuse me, what? Yeah, exactly. So, Who knew he could sing? Um, <laughs> I just have to butt in real quick. Right? Joel Schumacher, rest in peace, because we found out a couple of days ago. The director of the... Yeah. Yeah, he passed away. Really? Yeah, Joel Schumacher passed away, uh, I want to say, like, three... Maybe, maybe like three or four days ago. Huh, I must have missed that. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, he did. Of course, he did this uh, this version of Phantom. He did The Lost Boys, uh, mm-hmm. the two Bat- the cheesy Batman movies that everyone just guilty pleasure Batman movies. And, of course, a, a wonderful catalog. But, I, sorry, I had to butt in and say rest in peace to him because he's done, as cheesy as, as some of his films have been, He's he's been a wonderful uh, a wonderful filmmaker for all these years, so. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Schumacher, for your uh, your contributions to cinema. Absolutely. All right, Goodness. continue. I'm done. <laughs> um, um, so what about that film, like, makes it your favorite musical? Um, like you, I think it's the best musical of all time. I love the music. Um, I love the story. Um, I've read the book. I've read other adaptions of the book. Um there's just something about that movie that just really draws my attention. And when that movie comes on, the world stops. I don't let anybody talk. <laughs> and I'm the one sitting there singing along with it. Um, but it's just, it's so artistic. I mean, to take someone who is seen as a monster and make him into this beautiful creature with music is just amazing. Yeah, for sure. Now I, now I have to ask, of course, uh, me being like a musical mm-hmm. lover, have you seen the sequel? Yes. Oh. I took my daughter to see it here at the Fox Theater in Atlanta. Oh, yes. Okay. Perfect. That's oh all my I goodness. Oh. Um, so since we are replacing the musical scene with your favorite musical, um, you could do one scene or you could, you know, divide 
each three into like three different scenes in the movie. Mm-hmm. What would you replace the musical scene with from Phantom of the Opera? Oh my goodness. That is such a hard choice because I love when he first takes her to his lair and they're on the boat in the underground. But then I also like when he is there for his musical and he kidnaps her off the stage. So I think I would lean more towards that because that would provide more action as you're rolling through in the vehicles. Maybe some kind of setup where it's a live actor and they go down some kind of a jimmied rope into the underground. Um, I think that would be a good scene. Or just replace Bert's clothes and just turn him into the Phantom, and he just like. There you go. You could do that too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I I use that scene, and I I went with your first one. I was like, mm-hmm. you know, going down and just deeper and deeper into his lair as, you know, he lures her. So absolutely. Awesome. Got that okay. big heavy organ theme playing in the background. Yes. And, like, now that I'm thinking about it, I was like, you know what? Maybe I would, like, switch it up and you'd, like, round the corner instead of singing in the rain. It's her in her dressing room and it's the mirror and there's, like, an effect <gasps> where oh, you see Oh, that them. would be good, too. Yeah. And then you round the corner and you're, like, you're going down into his lane. Oh, okay. Anyways, we got to move on. <laughs> we got to move on. We can't one. just talk about it. We're going to we be in musical. We're, we're, <laughs> we got we to gotta, we gotta vehicle stop in musical, everyone. Got to gotta go on the right track. Hand pack. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So we're going to talk <clears throat> about mob movies and crime movies and mm-hmm. to our gangster scene. Now, I'm assuming you're talking about the uh, 2015 film Black Mass with yes. Johnny Depp? Yes. Yes. Okay. I I remember seeing previews for it. Again, this is one of those movies I have not seen. Oh, man. Oh, what Looking a movie. Looking at the cast list, I'm just like, wow, Johnny Depp, Benedict Cumberbatch, Kevin Bacon. Yeah. Like, oh. Um, so tell us about this movie and why it's your favorite. Uh, first of all, I'm just impressed with Johnny Depp and how well he did in that role in that movie. I mean, that movie, I never, if I hadn't watched it without knowing that he was in it, I would have probably not known it was him until almost the end of the movie. Um, I just, I think it really depicts what real um, mafia life is like. And, um, just kind of gives a very raw picture of how brutal it was and how nobody could trust anyone. Yeah, it's crazy. The makeup work, like, I think, like you said, too, like, if I didn't know that John yeah. Depp was in that movie, looking just at the poster alone, him standing there, I'm like, who is that? He yeah. disappeared in that role, like, like no no oh it was yeah it, it's it, it, as a, as a film and, and as a whole it's not the greatest movie in my in my opinion i'm sorry to uh but watching him just to see it for him is yeah. stunning it is so it's one of his best his best acting turns in my opinion absolutely you want to yeah. talk about going off on a different tangent he did it because I think that's why I like the movie so much, just because of the fact it's him and that it's a role I have never seen him do before. Yeah, I could. Yeah, I agree. Gabe, you need to see it. I do. I do. You do. The, I mean, that, and that's what I love about this podcast. Like, it's like, oh, okay, sure, yeah. Or it's you know r- brings up movies that I wanted to see and then I kind of like forget about because then you know three hundred other movies come out and I'm like, oh, I want to <laughs> see that too. Um, so. <laughs> So I will make sure to put it on my list. So what scene from the movie would you add into this gangster scene? I think I would, my favorite one is the dinner scene where Whitey's sitting there with his thugs and it's obvious that they're onto the fact that one of them is an FBI informant and all Whitey keeps talking about is what is in this marinade recipe? I need your family recipe. It's just, it's a hilarious scene. And once you see the movie, you'll get it. But it's like Whitey's on this whole other plane and everybody's like wanting to gang up. And (laughs) you're the one that's double crossing us. No, you're the one that's double crossing us. So I think that would be a good thing. Yeah, that'd be interesting, too, to see how we could work in, you know, somebody taking over the. It's the right. It's like this generation's uh, grapefruit in the face. I almost said pineapple for some reason. (laughs) I, I'm drinking pineapple water. I think that's what it is. No, Do but you I need no. a dull whip. Something. <laughs> Something. 
Uh, awesome. All right, so we are going to move into Western. Okay. Um, and I, I was talking to you a little bit about this while we were waiting for Chris to figure out everything that was going on on his side because it's all his fault. Meh, 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 meh. But your favorite Western is Tombstone. Uh, yes. 1993. And when I looked it up and I saw the poster, I told you this. I was like, I remember this as a kid. I didn't watch the movie, but I remember seeing these posters. And yeah. just looking at the cast list. Kurt oh, my Russell, gosh. The cast Bob is Kilmer, crazy. Sam oh, yeah. Bill Paxton. And, of course, it wouldn't be GMR without Charlton Heston. Nope. <laughs> so, and real mustaches. Yeah, exactly. 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 That's why I'm growing out one now. <laughs> um, so tell us about this movie and why it's your favorite Western movie. Um, you know, I really, I was never one to be on. I think John Wayne was a great actor, but I was never one to jump on that bandwagon. I'm more of the modern Western kind of person. And um, this movie is just, one, the cast is stellar. And two, to see them portray these characters. I mean, you almost forget who they really are and that they're actually in this movie. My favorite, of course, is the shootout scene at the OK Corral. I mean, that's a no-brainer. That scene is just phenomenal. I mean, just right there, I, I'm pretty sure you know exactly what scene you would put in the bandit scene now, especially oh, when yes. they taken over. Yeah, awesome. and it's so cool because they're just, like, walking through the town, just shooting people. They look to the left, oh, we'll shoot you. We look to the right, we'll shoot you. And I think... You know, you could make that into a really entertaining scene in the ride and have them just, you know, take full command of the show at that point. That, yeah, that would be cool. But, of course, we have to keep, you know, the uh, horse trough with the horse. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> we have to. We have to, yes. Um, but, yeah, okay. So, speaking of bandits and somebody taking over, I think it's, time I Yeehaw! Yeehaw! wait dave fesky's supposed to say that dave's gonna take us into a uh into a break and then when we come back i have taken the ride <laughs> nice we'll be right back on the great movie radio show hold it right there hombre Woo -wee! you're listening to the great movie radio show starring chris and gabe which means you hit the mother love don't any hombres move until we come back. <laughs> Unless you want a belly full of lead. <laughs> Warning. Remain on this podcast. The advertisement you are experiencing is extremely dangerous. Proceed with caution. Hi there, great movie radio show fans. My name is Dalton Burdett, and I'm here to tell you about the Movie Nights. Well, what are the Movie Nights? The Movie Nights are a small production company out of Orlando, Florida, responsible for award-winning short films, podcasts, and a variety of movie-loving content. And we are also new partners of the Great Movie Radio Show. So, for some more movie-loving content that you guys will probably enjoy, please head over to our YouTube channel, Movie Nights, and you can find the exact link at youtube.com slash c slash movie nights and also be sure to listen to our podcast hosted by me and my partner ryan warner on spotify youtube apple podcasts and google play and yes movie nights is spelled with a k because we think we're clever be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss another episode of the great movie radio show starring chris and gay when you do it means you're riding with us now so hold on to your horses speaking of which where are the horses Hundreds of movie riders from around the globe have come together to recreate the magic of the Great Movie Ride during the past few months to bring you the Great Movie Ride Quarantine Edition. Well, gee, Mr. Kent, that'd be swell. Witness the spectacular recreation of the ride from entrance to exit. The Great Movie Ride brings these movies to life and puts you right in the middle of the action. Danger. The emergency destruct system is now activated. The ship will detonate in T minus 10 minutes. It's time to take a magical journey into the movies once more. Tarzan, wait! There are friends! Owani! The Great Movie Ride lives on in The Great Movie Ride Quarantine Edition! 
coming soon. That's some mighty fine territory you're heading into, Pilgrim. Time to get back to the great movie radio show starring Chris and Gay. I wouldn't think about turning back if I was you. That is, if you want my opinion. And we're back on the great movie radio show with Jennifer. And she is about to Hello. take us... Hello! She is about to take us into her favorite science fiction fantasy movie. Listen, which I is... don't know what accent that was, but that didn't sound anything like a bandit or cowboy. <laughs> y'all listen here, hombre. I'm gonna take y'all into the sci-fi movies, and we're Thank gonna you. we're gonna see on up in here the the fifth element, Luc yeah, Besson's 1997 that, sci-fi that, extraordinary. That's better. I didn't think Julia Child was in Western movies. So. <laughs> Well, there's, there's what voice you probably would have heard if I was ever a bandit. The Fifth Element. What is there not to love about this movie? Oh, Honestly. it's such a great movie. And Luc Besson, sadly, has not done, you know, many good movies since this time period. Because, in my opinion, there's only two good Luc Besson movies. Uh, is Fifth Element and uh, Leon the Professional. Uh, I have not seen Lucy, but I hear it's decent. And sadly, you know, when we ask you guys to do your list, we ask what's your mm -hmm. one that really disappointed you. And mine was Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets, which he did. And it, the first 10 minutes of it was brilliant. And it just completely felt like the rest of the movie was the writing of a 12-year-old. And Ugh. yeah, I know. And, and you, you watch how how carefully crafted the fifth element was and still had a, a little bit of a cheese factor uh and to watch how valerian just fell apart I, i'm not sure if you've seen valerian or not uh no i have not um you can you can skip that one unless you okay. just want to yeah i think yeah. after you're critiquing i'm not even gonna bother <laughs> <laughs> the first 10 minutes are cool and i was excited and then the rest of the movie happened and i was like uh no but I love The Fifth Element. I really do love this movie. Uh, it's a wonderful action sci-fi movie. It is, and, but it's just and, hilarious, too. And then when you get to Chris Tucker. Oh, my God. That's the part is, I would put in the ride. He is wonderful. Well, you know, there's not a real reason why it's near and dear to me. It's just an entertaining movie. I love it. And Chris Tucker, oh, my gosh. I mean, every time I watch it, I almost choke on what I'm drinking because he just cracks me up. To Come see in! him play this role. <laughs> I know, exactly. <laughs> and then um, just the fantasy part of it, that someone took it to that level, that that's what the future would be like. It's just, wow. I agree. The 90s soundtrack is killer. Absolutely. And, uh, another, we, we were talking earlier about Joel Schumacher, and sadly, another person having to do with one of the movies we're talking about today, Ian Holm, just passed away a few days ago. Uh, I think he was 88, uh, but yeah. he's, he's known for The Fifth Element and Alien, and his turn as Bilbo Baggins in the Tolkien movies when they did The yeah, Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. I saw that post. I was sad and, to oh, see that. I was so heartbroken because Ian Holmes always, I don't know, growing up and watching those movies and Alien being my favorite horror, I still remember the first time I saw Alien. And, and this is appropriate because we're in the sci-fi section where Alien was, so this is a, appropriate to have a little Ian Holm tribute here. I remember, yeah, the first time I saw Alien, Ian Holm was just this creepy, maniacal character. I had no idea he was a freaking android or robot or whatever. So <laughs> when, when I watched it, I was already on the edge of my seat because, like, when's this freaking Alien going to get everybody and all this stuff? Yeah, and exactly. And then when that came into play... It blew my mind. Like, yes. I was so tense about something else that that completely threw me for a spin. And I was 15 or 16 the first time I saw Alien. It just, yeah. oh my god. And so him to portray that uh, character, uh, it was, oh, it really knocked my socks. But, oh my god, I'm so, I'm so upset that he... Uh, yeah, I am I, too. Know, thank you, Ian Holm, for all your... Uh, all your wonderfully acted characters that we have come to love and cherish. And, of course, he's he's played Napoleon before, too. So, um, ah. Which Chris Tucker-driven scene 
from the fifth element do you think that you'd put and and you could put you know anything because alien was kind of this uh not like a montage, but it had several different developments going on. You're going through right. the chains, and you're yeah. going through her hiding by the ladder, and then you have the alien coming at you twice. There could be multiple scenarios that occur in this. I think, I think when we bring when you were to run around the corner there, and you come into where Sigourney Weaver was, mm. um, I, that would be where I would put Chris Tucker, and it would be where <laughs> he's coming through the hallway, you know, with his entourage doing his broadcast. Yes. Yes. Yep. See, I would change the ceiling alien to Chris Tucker <laughs> with the microphone coming down. Coming down at you. Me. Come in! <laughs> come in, come, 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 come. Oh my god, that's funny. I think yeah, then I would have her coming out of the ceiling or pop out of the side where the other alien is is go multi pass. <laughs> multi pass. <laughs> Corbin Dallas multi pass. We could have many characters pop out at you and uh I gotta mention to Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman is the villain in that movie. So was, uh, I yeah. love everything Gary Oldman's in. Is uh, he's a treasure? He really is. Yeah. Um, he is. Oh man, I, I just I love that movie. I need to sit down and watch it again. It's so good. Like I said, it's just so entertaining. I mean, it, it just keeps you going the whole time. It really is, and the uh, the opera scene, of course, where she's doing yeah. the the opera and all the fighting's going on, and then you yeah. find out she has the stones and. All. Spoiler alert, everybody. <laughs> this was 97, you know, if you haven't seen it. I would end that scene, too, is her there where they find the stone. You know, oh, after yeah. Blue blood everywhere. <laughs> well, just make sure it doesn't get on the track, I guess. <laughs> you never know. So we're going we're gonna to roll into your favorite, or one of your favorite action adventures. And uh, you don't have one movie listed here. You actually have an entire series the Born and it's series. The Born yeah. Identity and all of Ugh. them. Supremacy and Legacy and Legend and everybody. Yes. All of it's them. just, it's action packed. I love Matt Damon. And it's one of those where you look forward to the next movie in the series. Gotcha. I, I've seen Identity. I've seen, was it Supremacy was the second one? Yes. I think so. Yes. And then Ultimatum was the third one. I've saw, mm -hmm. I saw those. And then Jeremy was... Renner did one, the Legacy one. Yes. I saw that one. Okay, so the, the last one he did, uh, I think it was just called Jason Bourne. Yeah. I haven't seen that one. Christopher. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just got to give you a hard time. Of course no. you do. <laughs> no, so I'm sure you're, and, and I'm sure you've talked about this on your podcast, or are getting ready to. But I'm sure you're super excited for the Yes, Bourne I can't wait. Didn't that it's start today? Great opening. The grand it opened opening today. Was My today. cousin is actually down there with his son, and they went on it twice. Oh! And they, I've seen the video. The Matt YouTube Damon video. must be there, or else they never mind. <laughs> no, I don't. Th they were, the, you know, they were supposed to do big stuff, but then, uh, you know, My yeah. Sharona came through and. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start calling it that. Thank you, Gabe. My Sharona. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, my goodness. So, Jin, uh, yeah, what about, oh, we, we said Matt Damon, but is there anything else about the, the book? So it's just suspenseful. It's, I mean, it's one of those, you're on your edge of the seat the whole time watching that. Oh, those fight scenes to me. Oh, I my gosh. Love, they're good. I'm like, oh, they're like in good. that apartment with the pen, and I was like, oh. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, yes. And I, that's so funny because that would be one of the scenes I would put in the ride, too. Oof. Oh, I got chills. Okay. It's it's very interesting how I don't. And it's not similar because you know it's kind of a spy noir uh, espionage thriller. Mm -hmm. it, there, there it, it's not like Bond. It's no, not like it's not. it's not like Mission Impossible. Any of those big franchises. It, it's really set its own standard, I, and I think it's because of the stunt work that they've 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 done in it. Plus, you know, just the charisma of Matt Damon. Yeah, and it's also, that series is one of those, when you're done watching one of the movies, you're like, okay, did I really interpret this the right way? You almost want to watch it again to catch everything, because there's so much going on in those movies. I like watching them to figure out how Moby is going to remake Extreme Ways again. Because <laughs> in every single Bourne movie, it's that extreme, that's like the theme, I think, for the Bourne yeah. movies. Is, and so each one, he's like remixed his original Extreme Ways song every time. 
yeah. Gabe, have you heard if they put that at the stunt show? Uh, I do not. I haven't seen it yet. I've only seen, like, the clips online from when they did the Today Show and stuff. From what I've seen, it's not so much... Fo- like, it's focusing on the, like, idea of Jason Bourne and stuff like that, but it, I don't think it really pinpoints but i could be wrong i haven't i haven't seen the show i just heard yeah. great things okay and it's well, i know you're thing. in the park i'm out at the park so I, I didn't know if you'd seen anything or not no 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 now, every time they have a preview i'm usually working so i can't go gotcha uh, i just want to know so. i just want to know if they play extreme ways anywhere in the attraction as, as much as i'm making fun of the fact that moby remixes it every time it's actually a really great song i i, I it like is. that one it's a lot it's a fantastic song i love that the, the best one he did of all his remixes is when he actually put, or, you know, the orchestral theme behind yes. it, and it's not just the the techno electronic that he does. When he had the, when he had the orchestra with it, it was fantastic. Uh, yeah, it did, was. Which one of your, which one of the five is your favorite? Um, you know, I would probably have to say Renner. Born no, Ultimatum. <laughs> that was a yeah. I would sec- have to say that's that's the third one, right? I, I, you know, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm looking at it right now because I have to know. I think uh, it's the third one. Yeah, I'm yeah. pretty sure it's the third one. It is because it was 2007. Identity supremacy. Yeah. Ultimate. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny too because if you look at who directed the first one, it was uh, Doug Liman, and his first film or one of his first films was uh, with Vince Vaughn and Favreau. Uh, was it Swingers? Oh my gosh, that's such a good movie. Mm-hmm. That was that was one of Lyman's first films, I want to say. And so to co- see him do that, and then come and do the Born movies, it's just a growth and a directorial uh, take, definitely. So Ultimatum's your favorite. So let's put something from Ultimatum on the ride. What would you take from Ultimatum and put on the oh, ride? Oh boy, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> we could just put Why are the you whole movie. Ask these questions. Let's just it's... put the whole movie on there and call it a day, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to be on here. I yes. Did. No, I I agree with it. Instead of the tram, it's a Mini Cooper, and you're you know, <gasps> driving through. Oh, oh my god, that would be so cool. <laughs> we could just have a Mini Cooper like dry, like jump over the uh, over the tram. Oh, so, so, there you go. So what we've learned with this recording with Jennifer is we just have to make two rides: one about Phantom of the Opera and one about uh, the Bourne series. <laughs> yes. Yes, two rides. When you get in the queue, do you want ride A or do you want ride B? I mean, I was about to go even further and say, we're just going to let them choose what movie they want to go to. It's the future. <laughs> they can sit on something and then we transport them and just put them in right. a little room and their whole movie just happens around them. No, I'm, tired of, of, here's I'm the, tired of screens. No more screens. The new like, great movie ride. Oh, but you know, when you do that, you just get into a whole mess of boring after a while. The good thing about the great movie ride was the interaction. There is never going to be screens, Gabe. I was going to actually have Matt Damon in the room. We're going to we're okay, going to kidnap long? him and he's going to work for this attraction for the rest of his life. Well, if okay, you're going to do fine. that, then I want to be his personal assistant. <laughs> oh, How do I goodness. buy out the the Matt Damon scene for a day? Is that a thing I can do? <laughs> It sounds about right. We're going to move on. I think any scene that's high-paced would work in there. I mean, it's just, there's so many to choose from in that movie that it would be hard to pinpoint one. You'd have to kind of mix them together. Montage. I haven't seen, kind of like, yeah, kind of like what we did with Jack and the Bond movies, I guess. Because there's, yeah, so many things that happen in just those five films. And we're going to move to horror, and this is where uh, something's going to happen to to me because I'm going to be curious about something, and then I'm going to die. And Gabe's You're going to meet out. the Antichrist. <laughs> oh, well, thank you for that. I appreciate you putting me through this. I as long <laughs> as when you die, the, the Wi-Fi still works. Um... Thanks, Gabe. Oh, goodness. Thanks. Uh, I appreciate it. So the Vatican Tapes is your favorite horror film. Yes. And I'm taking it. That's the 2015 directed by uh, Mark Neveldine, Neveldine, I think is how you say it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's got it's got some well-known people in this. Uh, Michael Pena. Uh, Dougary Scott. I can never say this guy's name. Uh, Damon Hunsu, I think is his name. He's been in Guardians of the Galaxy and <laughs> Captain Marvel. And, of course, I'm just saying Marvel movies. But he's been... Uh, I think he was in 12 Years a Slave. He's been in wonderful films, a wonderful actor. Uh, Blood yeah. Diamond, Leo DiCaprio. Uh, what about this movie? I've, could, to be honest, I've never heard of it. Really? Same. I just, you know, I happen to just stumble upon it about a year ago. And it's just um, the way that they 
depict the whole birth and transition of the Antichrist into the world and the fact that, spoiler alert, towards the end of the movie, that it's a woman, which is kind of cool. Um, but also the fact that, she, you know, she just, she becomes this big media mogul and she starts speaking to people and that's how she is creating her following is through this world tour of speaking um, that she's transitioning people for her army against God. Mm. Um, so it's really interesting that they take it into this whole economic business kind of chapter of her life. I highly think they should do a second one that goes into the story of her surviving the battle, winning and walking the earth. Very intriguing. I just, I've never heard of it. And I've, this is the, like when I looked at your list, I was like, ah, I can tapes. What is this? And, uh, <laughs> you know what? I think we should just get Michael Pena on the show and do go. just a recap of the movie for us. Like right? on the, uh, in the Ant-Man and. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what happened was, uh, <laughs> and then you have the little, the little SD, the little tappy music playing behind. Uh, yeah, and I, I guess this was, I'm assuming it was just a little indie movie, potentially, because I don't see any, like, big names or anyone yeah. that I know of as far as, like, the crew goes or anything, so that's pretty, uh, pretty awesome. Yeah, and the only bad thing is I don't know how I would incorporate it into what would have been the Anubis scene in the ride, but it's just, it's just a very thought-provoking movie yeah i mean is there uh is there like this any uh any uh brutal death scenes or anything that oh yeah definitely. definitely definitely well i guess one of those would work because that's how i go bye-bye yeah yeah we could actually we could also make it where you're the one that is there to defend the world against the antichrist and you die yeah i guess i could i could like Suck it up and be like, y'all, I know I took you, but I'm about to do this hero thing, and then I'm dead. So, karma. Uh, and then Gabe comes out, yay, got him. <laughs> and then every, it would be kind of twisty because it's like I've I've gone from villain to hero, and now Gabe is suddenly, right. you know, the tour guide's usually like the hero coming out, I got you, I saved you. Now, you would kind of come out the villain, Gabe. Yeah. Always. <laughs> Always. <laughs> oh no, it's Gabe Make a again. New twist oh. to the ride. <laughs> now we're they're going to be or in the fear of you the rest of the, the Antichrist. Time. <laughs> or just yeah. really throw them off for a loop and just have a completely new tour guide do the last half of it. <laughs> oh my gosh. That would that be would funny. Be hilarious. I've always wanted I always wanted to do that like in like when the ride was going just like if someone else was coming up to like, I'd be like, "Hey, do you want to switch?" And like, you could take mine, and I'll take yours. I always wanted to do that, but I just, I didn't want to get in trouble, and so I never did. But just like, imagine if it was like two completely different people, like me. I'm like wild and crazy, and like very loud. <laughs> and then you have somebody like quiet, like take over the rest of you, and just everybody just uh -huh. they don't pay attention to anything what's going on the rest of the ride. They're just like, wait. What happened? Yeah. Hello? Where am I? What's going on? <laughs> but in this scenario, I will take back over the vehicle. So. You can have it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, cool. So we are going to jump into the uh, drama and romance. And, ah. uh, hit up everybody's favorite, The Notebook. Yes. Everybody's. 2004. Well, a lot of people's favorite. <laughs> Please okay. tell me you've seen this one. I've seen it, yeah. 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 I love Ryan Gosling, so I've seen it, yes. Yeah. And I, and I love, love Rachel, Rachel McAdams. McAdams, so I've seen it. <laughs> Not my kind of movie, but I've seen it. Well, you know, you guys got to tolerate the chick flicks once in a while. It's... Hey, I love a good chick flick, and I love a like good chick flick that's funny. Mm -hmm. Like I have no problem watching them, but I've never seen The Notebook. And what? I'm not, and I'm not like Gabe, rushing out to see. Come it. on. Okay, listen, Mister. I've only seen two out of her top five. So yeah, you got me. <laughs> you got me there. Oh no. All right. Why don't you go fix your internet? <laughs> <laughs> and stop uh, recording. No, I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay. So, um, tell us about the Notebook for s some of the people like me who've never seen it, and what about it makes it your favorite? <laughs> 
Um, I like the way that the story is told. Um, it's a narrative and you're living flashback memories of two people that loved each other more than anything. And then once the story evolves, you meet the actual characters in present day and their age and the wife suffers from dementia, so she doesn't remember him. And he reads the journal of this story to her to help her remember. And she comes back to reality for a couple of minutes at a time. And it's just very endearing and it's very heartfelt. And for those who haven't seen it, I'm so sorry, but the scene at the end where they pass away together, oh my gosh, it is heart wrenching. Oh, oh, thank you. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a crier in a movie. So <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, Chris's internet must have gone down again. He's crying. God, uh, Gosling's dead again. Not again. Why oh, did I say that? Oh, no. um, anyways, we're gonna move on. And he said, "He said, anyways." Oh. <laughs> well, true. We did kill him in the last scene. So Ouch. Count anymore. Um, Ouch. Hashtag Antichrist. Uh, so what scene from the notebook would you add? Um, well, if we have to be PG-13, we can't do the big kiss scene because it is, you know, very heated. Um, so I think maybe if we were to go along the same kind of theming as the bogey scene that was in there, um, the two of them, her coming to reality for that few minutes and remembering him, they're sitting at the dinner table together and she remembers him and he's crying because she's there, she's real, um, and he gets to touch her and he gets to kiss her one last time. Oh, that's nice. That's sweet. <laughs> I like that. Okay, I like that now. <laughs> Chris, Chris, you're, you're dead. Chris, oh, you're, sorry, you're dead. sorry. <laughs> I don't like being dead. No, I'm just kidding. Um, well, speaking of priors, um, we are going to jump into the animated. <laughs> We're going to sp- jump into the animated section, and t- you have a tie between Moana and Coco now. Yes. Coco is like one of my favorite movies. And it's see, a I, I love Coco. I just think it's great. It's I I love the Mexican Pavilion at Epcot. So when this movie came out, I was like, yes. <laughs> um, but I also like Moana. I I just it's a good movie. Yeah, no, for sure. I I don't take anything away from Moana. I think it's a great movie. You know, awesome soundtrack, obviously with Lin Manuel. But yeah, I mean. To me, out of the two, Coco slightly yeah. beats Moana and just the visual effects and the underworld Absolutely. and all that stuff in that story and the yeah. way they brought it. Um, yeah, so and what's... I think that's the scene that I would use, too, is when they're coming through the gates to come spend the evening with their loved ones in the graveyard. I think that would be the scene. Yes, that's awesome. I, now, I don't know, if, have you seen, before the quarantine, the new parade over at Disneyland that they have, like, that float from Coco? No, I haven't. Oh, yeah, I I could be mistaken, but they have that new parade at Disneyland, and mm-hmm. the float is, like, the graveyard, and then you see the bridge, like, of, oh. of the yellow flowers, and then you see Dante, uh, like, float on by every now and then stuff. Oh, that's and, so cool. So, if yeah. You'll have to check it out and look at it, and yeah, it's, definitely. it's really awesome. Cool. Um, so we're going to wrap things up now, obviously, and in the great movie ride, we didn't really focus uh, on the comedy scene, so Chris mm-hmm. decided, and this is like one of my favorite parts that we've added to this. Um, we added a, a uh, comedy scene, and you picked a great one with <laughs> Wedding Crashers. Um, you know, I uh, when we get to the scene, you could pick, I think, for this scene – you could do whatever you want, no matter how you know, vulgar or anything. Don't think about Disney; just do whatever scene you want. Um, <laughs> but first, we'll talk about like why it's your favorite comedy. I love Vince Vaughn. Um, I love his movies, but that whole movie just cracks me up at how stupid these two guys are. <laughs> and the scene that I picked when he gets shot in the butt. When they're out <laughs> duck hunting, oh my gosh, or quail hunting, I about lost it. And it's funny because Chris and I, when we talk, we were talking about this before about your favorite comedy. Mm-hmm. The scene we went to was, you know, 
when they go visit Will Ferrell. One of like, the mom, the uh, meatloaf. One of bleep. the best cameos mom. I have ever seen in a comedy. <laughs> Frick, ma, the Frick. meatloaf. You know, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I, I, every time he shows up, or like when he oh. started showing up. After that, with Owen Wilson, like, he'll fake cry and the look of the girl and be like, hello there. And it's just... <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> he He's one of my favorite comedians, Will Ferrell. Some of the things yeah, he does he is... Oh, my God. So funny. No, but it's a, it's great. Bradley Cooper, which is funny. The Back back in the day, you know, Bradley Cooper yeah. was just a B name, and now he's... He's Bradley Cooper. He's Bradley yeah. Cooper, exactly. So <laughs> then you go back to watch it, and you're like, holy crap, he's in this. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, and he plays a total douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he yes. plays it well. So but obviously, then so again, that... Rachel Adams is in there too. So yeah, you yeah. know, we love mm. her. Um, so obviously, that scene where he gets shot in the butt is your favorite scene. Mm -hmm. Now, like as you know, like we're gonna replace Oz with this comedy scene, and that's a pretty big scene. So right. is that the only scene you would bring in there? Would you bring anything else, or would you put something completely different in the ride? Um, you know, I think we would take that whole scenario from where he gets shot in the butt and then the after effect where he's sitting there on his stomach and Isla Fisher is, you know, doing what she's doing with his butt and he's eating ice cream and he's cussing John out for putting him in this position. I think it would just be a whole transition through that whole now part of the story. Now I picture like you rounding in, you see him get shot, then it fades. And yeah. When the witch pops up, it's just him, uh, like you know, on his stomach with his butt up and cursing <laughs> the toy <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> That's all I see now. And you can even do the tour guide speech to be John throwing it back <laughs> at his face. For sure. Well, awesome. That rounds up around the track. Wait, now uh... before we before we oh. go, can we can. When you're driving on the finale and, and Dorothy's mm -hmm. there, can we have Will Ferrell there yelling about me? Oh, yes. That's <laughs> can we that please? perfect, sitting on his couch. It's, it's and like you bathroom. drive by the living room. Ah, oh, that would be like Stay the long. best way to end the ride. It really would. <laughs> That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. So, okay, t I, I was mistaken. Yes, we have to add. Instead of Emerald City, it's just Will Ferrell on the couch. Yes. Yelling for Mila. <laughs> <laughs> I never know what she's doing back there. Oh, God. <laughs> so, all right. So now for sure we are pulling on to talk. We had a lot of fun. Great, great movies for the ride here oh, yeah. as well as two new rides. A look out for the Phantom of the Opera ride and the uh, Born <laughs> series ride. Yeah. So. You can almost make it, you know, how they're doing the rides where you drop down to different levels for different parts of the scenes of the rides. We could have level one, level two. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There you go. A mini It'll be like Spaceship Terror. Earth. You have a screen in front of you and you choose which movie. And, that's where you, <laughs> and then it moves over and you drop. Right. <laughs> So, oh my go. goodness, you too. Uh, we're we're the peanut gallery. Jen, thanks thanks for coming on the show. We really do appreciate no problem. it. Problem. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's it's been our pleasure. Do you have uh, have anything for the uh, the world of movie ride uh, to hear before we uh, let everybody off the ride? No. No. I'm just so I'm a... so glad to be able to talk about it. I miss that ride so much. Awesome. Well, we will definitely have you back. It looks like we'll have you back next season, probably, because we're Sweet. we're getting toward the uh, near the end of season one. And like <laughs> Gabe and, and we were we were all chatting earlier before we started recording, is uh, we've we've officially had more episodes than Firefly, so we are deemed successful. <laughs> we have signed on for a second season, and Same with us, that's fantastic with ourselves. Uh, we we <laughs> gave ourselves the job, so a season two will happen, whether the public wants it or not. Did you give yourselves a pay raise? <laughs> uh, well, first there has to be pay given to be a, ah, to have a raise. Yeah. So oh, sorry, budget cuts. Budget, budget cuts. Budget cuts. <laughs> Jen, thanks yeah. thanks again for joining the show, and well, uh, we thank will you definitely. For me. Oh, it's it's been our pleasure, it really has. Gabe, you got anything before we go, buddy? No, uh, like you said, that was a lot of fun, um, especially. I finally had somebody to help me uh, pick on Chris this time. Yes, <laughs> anytime. I am up for it. There you go. There you go. Gabe, did you have a favorite favorite scene from her? Uh, her. You know, I just the wedding crashers. Yeah. 
Fifth Element. Fifth Element. Now, now all I could just picture, I wish the ride was there because now I'm yeah. just picture Chris Tucker coming down. <laughs> <as alien. laughs> would be, you just have Chris Tucker come out from like several different places there too, yes. and just continue the. And then when you get the wedding crashers, he jumps out at you again to make you not forget him. <laughs> oh my God! Well, thank you everyone for listening to the Great Movie Radio Show. As you've heard, we are going to have a season two. Um, our last couple of episodes are coming within the next uh, month or two, and then we're going to be taking a rest of the year break. So hang out with us for the next few rounds, and uh, listen to us wherever you listen to your podcast. Uh, you had a great time listening to Jennifer there, joining us for Around the Track. And now, Gabe and I are sitting with the crew behind the great movie ride, quarantine edition what's up gabe hey bud what's up not much so we have with us as a bonus segment for today's episode matthew cram sean Locke, pat dooley kelly groover and stephanie madrigal these five wonderful people have over the past few months put together this project that it just kind of appeared on uh, our Great Movie Ride Facebook group out of nowhere. And it started with an idea that Cram had. What started this whole project idea? So about like a, a week or two into quarantine, I finally came to realization of like, man, I'm stuck at home forever. And I saw these great like, um, you know, SNL was doing stuff at home. Jimmy Fallon was doing stuff at home. And then I was just talking to Pat one night and I was thinking like, wouldn't it be cool if we did like the Great Movie Ride at home? And, like, we got everyone back together to do one last show. And, honestly, I originally thought about it as being, like, a Zoom table read, which a lot of people were doing at the time. I know Community did that. And, and after a while, um, I got a little too excited. And I posted it to the Great Movie Ride group on Facebook. And then uh, Stephanie, Kelly, and, and others said, oh, we can do this, and we can do everything. And then uh, <laughs> I, I got a little freaked out. I'm like, we're really going to do this whole thing? And I think we'll do the A show and the B show. And somewhere along the line, they're like, well, what if we did pre-show? What if we did finale? What if we did, you know, heck, throw an usher in there. And um, let's have an ADB. It kind of grew out of proportion. And, well, yeah, exactly. And, that, and then it became a lot of people wanted to be interested. And that's where Stephanie and Kelly came in. They're like, we like lists. We'll make a list. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I should correct one thing that Matt said there. We, uh, I pulled it up on my Facebook. Uh, April sixteenth was the night that we were just talking on the phone about, hey, wouldn't it be fun? I woke up the morning of the seventeenth, and Matt had already posted it in the Facebook group, and I had one hundred and thirty <laughs> notifications that, oh, okay, so we're doing a Zoom call, cool. <laughs> so then I. I was the wet blanket that popped in and was like, hey, so that's not practical <laughs> at all. <laughs> let's it sounds, uh, let's it dial sounds that like back. I would do. I would, I would totally, I would, we should do this, but we'll wait till the morning. The next morning you wake up and everything's already happening. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's oh, like something I would do. I think uh, I like came in as a cheerleader. I was like, I saw it and I was like, hell's to the yeah. And like commented, let's do it dropped a spreadsheet with like roles in it already i'm like let's do this people started like commenting and like writing in their name for like roles like people were snatching up roles right away so we were like let's do the ride and then mm -hmm. more like so many people wanted to be a part of it we're like okay well we don't have enough roles i guess let's open up finale let's open up pre-show let's 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 add a greeter let's add a guest you know adb casting <laughs> director the Let's whole cast thing. every single munchkin. I remember. Oh yeah, that. and even the voices, the voices in Gangster, they all uh -huh. have uh, physical bodies now. So <laughs> the mystery is, the mystery has been revealed as to who's behind those yeah. voices. Now you know what Joey and Ma look like. Yeah, <laughs> yep, yeah, Joey and Ma, and that was something I think you know it was good to have um, other people to kind of look at once we had it going and we were going for a while too, like just having other people go, hey, what about that? What about that? Did you remember this? And, you know, Mark yeah. Stevens came in and, and sort of, um, you know, found those little moments that we overlooked and um, like, oh, yeah. like the voices and things. So, and, and um, it was really fun. And I, when I, when I came in, I joined the first meeting thinking, um, you know, I'll join it. I'll see, I've got nothing else going on. Like, I'll just see what I can do and what I can help with. 
Um, and then it turned in, <laughs> and then it turned into Kelly and I, um, you know, for four weeks, basically just focusing on the script and, you know, those voices. And like that casting. Came, yeah. And, um, and just started the ball rolling yeah. there, but it was, we didn't know how to really start it. We just sort of <laughs> jumped we, in with both feet. Well, you guys yeah. took the project. Cause I remember it initially getting posted and uh, I was talking to Gabe because I was like, hey, Gabe, are you working on this? And it was just as soon – I think he has just started back because the Universal was starting to announce that they were going to uh, bring back the parks open. And so he got busy, and he he was unable to do it, um, yeah. which I have a funny story about that, Gabe. You'll appreciate this in a moment. And you guys just continually uh, – we're going to add this. We're going to add that. And I was like, I just did like two things. What, who, how, how, <laughs> how many things do you need? And I ended up doing, I think I did four. I think I did four submissions. You did a bunch. I, I remember that. Right, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, so, so when Gabe told me he wasn't able to be a part of it, I remember one of my submissions was uh, for finale, uh, the part where John Hurt's laying on the table and Alien and the little baby uh -huh. the popped out. Yes. And, my wife and I had taped a Xenomorph Funko Pop to a stick. And so I'm laying on <laughs> Amazing. We had made my bed look like it's the amazing. table and, on the Nostromo. And I'm laying there with the, my uh, a white undershirt painted red like it's bloody. And then cups <laughs> everywhere. And I'm shaking there like having a mini seizure because, you know, I had just had a chest burster happen. And so she's taking the Funko Pop and zooming it at the camera. And it, you know, took us 10 minutes to get a shot. Um, but Game by almost took a picture of you and cut it out and put it on the Xenomorph pop. So you were in Why? Why? You should have. So you could have been a part That's of it. A, and I was, was the original take and I was the original well, you, know. you never know. There, there might know. be some there might be some people you see in some posters and some you go. different little so, uh, things along the way. We do still need a mustache lady. <laughs> Oh, we don't man. actually need a mustache lady. No inanimate <laughs> object, Clara. So uh, I'm going to go down the list, and I, and I know all of you have been like putting this together. Matt, you you came up with the idea. Sean, uh, you were doing text overlays uh, for the trailers and helping with editing. Pat, you've been doing a large chunk of the editing, and of course, mm -hmm. Kelly and Stephanie, uh, you both did organizing of getting the list of people who's doing what, and you've been keeping it not chaotic for everybody hopefully you all also were in it yes. and i know i know all of you probably did plenty of roles just to fill in the blanks of what all, all of us could do uh do each of you have a favorite part that you did and i want to start down the line we'll start with cram uh do you have a favorite part that you contributed mm. to the project so, so you remember when this was supposed to be like a zoom table read and i was like <laughs> sure i'll do tour guide a this really long role and then when it evolved, I immediately regretted it. And actually, to be completely transparent, I got a little anxious. You know, I, I didn't think I, I could do it. But um, I eventually found a jacket and, and put on the little placard. Uh, I do enjoy how in the Great Movie Quarantine Edition, one tour guide has the old reds on, and the other tour guide has the newer costume on, which is very interesting. That's really but, um, So I did tour, <laughs> tour guide A. Pat keeps lo losing my shots, and I keep out and having to redo them. <laughs> um, I'm Dropbox, blame, man. man. I'm blaming Dropbox. <laughs> um, but that's fine. So yeah, I I did tour guide A, which was fun. But I quickly realized you can't move your arm, uh, so it was very awkward and hard to maintain with the background. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. It's very hard to do the show because uh, the beauty of the great movie ride is how you can interact with each other. And mm. so when you can't interact with each other. It's well, you could uh, you could have set up some cardboard cutouts of people like they're doing at the ball games right now or something. <laughs> Just don't hit the dog. The, the yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's right. Sean, uh, what out of all the roles that you uh, contributed to the project, what was your favorite one that you uh, you did? Well, I mean, I kind of came into it late. I opened the group one day and I was like, oh my god, there's this list, but all the good stuff is gone. Oh my god, nobody picked uh, Ethan, you know, Martin. Um, and no, you don't, Ethan. No, you don't. So that was like the one I grabbed. I mean, how could you not want to do that? Um, so that was fun. But, uh, you know, I, also nobody did... I know, right? <laughs> I think I saw because they were while we were submitting things in people, they were uh, Stephanie and Kelly. I think you guys were posting 
uh, gift clips of video yeah. submissions, and I saw that, and it looked awesome. That, by the mm -hmm. way, and yeah, that, I, was, I, that was so cool. I've got far too much time, and I've got, <laughs> <laughs> I've got oh, man. sweet, so I am not, you know, against putting myself on a green screen and putting myself into things. And I roped in my whole family. We did the whole um, Armageddon clip and finale. Oh, with nice. my old Star I used my old Star Tours costume. We all had to wear it. Um, <laughs> So actually, the Armageddon thing was my favorite one. <laughs> awesome! It's so awesome. good. Yeah, it's so good. Good. Awesome. I mean, he he started submitting roles and or his, his his videos. Like I saw his his bandit, his sheriff and bandit, oh, and that, I I remember sharing the gif of that, and yeah. like everybody, it like exploded in the Facebook group, <laughs> so and good. I was just like, we need we need we need to get this role filled. Sean, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Production value. Sean's got it. Let's go. Yeah. There you go. Hey, Pat, uh, what about you? Uh, what was your favorite uh, part or role that you filled? So the only on-screen role I'm actually doing, um, just because I have my hands full with the editing, is I'm the vehicle onboard audio. So the, right. and now the Old West. Um, so your on-screen role is an off-screen role. Got it. <laughs> I'm, 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 <laughs> Hey, you know, the, the joys of, uh, of being one of the first ones in is like, I don't want to be on camera, but I am. I'm putting myself in like a little network bug in the corner of the screen. So you do see me when I'm talking. Um, but I want to go back to uh, just for a second, something that had kind of been talked about what Matt was talking about the, the Zoom call and then Sean putting himself in with, uh, you know, uh, like CGIing himself into scenes. Obviously, editing has been my favorite part of this whole thing is I, I'm basically the only one that has gotten to see it every step of the way and seeing the wide birth of production values on this thing uh, from Sean's green screen awesomeness to uh, the, what the, the skeleton on the stick in the Raiders trailer is just yeah. enough to get maybe a magic, the gathering card or something that somebody's just like pushing at the screen. <laughs> it's, I, I love it. I love how like clearly like, slipshod this whole thing is um so but yeah the, my my on-screen time is limited to warning you are entering or you know yeah that. no the the imagination that has gone into this i mean whether you have you know uh like you were saying he cgi'd himself and or i'm laying on a bed with cups and a funko pop running at a camera it, it's <laughs> it, it's been so fun to just you know how can i recreate this with what I have laying around my house. I love being a part of it. Isn't it addicting too? Like once it you is. do one clip, you're like, oh, I could do that. Or I could do, you know, <laughs> yeah, you that? I could do that. And I, I, I say that cause my directing, cause I have my, I had my phone on a clamp holding, cause I, I, I was laying in the shop. Whereas like, if I was directing it and doing the whole thing, sure. But it got tough and I was like, I, I can't do yeah. this director business <laughs> too much. <laughs> Kelly, what was your favorite? Uh, submission your favorite role in the project so like when we did the original like early on in the list and we we decided to build in um um pre-show one of my favorite positions was casting director so i was like definitely casting director um <laughs> but um it just i when i started to like think about the speed feel and you know the Welcome to the great movie ride. In just a few moments, these doors behind me will open and your magical journey into the movies will begin. Like how to incorporate that into what we were doing. So I completely like rewrote the spiel to like introduce you to our project, um, invite you in and totally be like, hey, grab a drink, you know, like chill out, enjoy the show. Um, and I just, it's just one of my favorite roles. Um, I will say I did enjoy like also filling in for Joan Blondell in the <laughs> Footlight Parade. All nice. I had to do was turn and smile. It was like one <laughs> one, one morning, Pat Pat was like, "We have Joan Blondell. Like she's nowhere else in that trailer." And I'm yeah. like, "I got it. Hang on." <laughs> and I literally like ten you minutes later, yeah, you did. Like busted that out for him. <laughs> so awesome. That was fun. Uh, Stephanie, yeah. what about you? So, uh, like Mr. Cram, um, you know, initially early on, 
there, I think the thought was that we were going to divvy up the tour guides and have like one in musical and then have a different one. But then as we got to, so I signed up for tour guide uh, B show mm -hmm. okay. and thinking, thinking, you know, it would just be that small role <laughs> because obviously we, we had our hands full with this, um, the planning part. So, but then as we got a little closer, we're like, you know what? People aren't going to know what's going on if we have all these different people popping up on screen. And so we just decided to keep it consistent. And I was like, oh, boy, this is going to be rough. And, right. um, you know, the uh, the limitations of the background of Zoom, just like Matt, you know, couldn't really move. But um, but it was fun. And I had to I was I don't know, Matt, if you felt like this, but I felt like I wanted to make sure I got every line perfect like hmm. I knew the movie writers would be watching I was like I cannot mess this up you know like I thought about bringing some humor but I'm like nope I could just gotta you know deliver those <laughs> lines exactly like they are written um yeah, so it's funny you mentioned that um just because like there was points when like Pat and I would be like wouldn't it be funny if we did this instead and they were like well this is not one of our silly skits this is like the show honor to the ride right and so, you know, we shouldn't add that humor in. But also, like, yeah, I want to get every line right. And it's been hard because I don't know if you guys are aware. We all come from different generations. But for me, it's been, God, 13 years. <laughs> so yeah. it was tough yeah. to get back into it. Well, yeah. that also kind of speaks to, like, how we came about with, like, our script. Like, Matt got us a copy of the 2003 script after the uh, after the big, like, rehab. And I was it 02? Was it 03? 02, 03? I guess so three. It was a um, one, yeah. Yeah, and we were trying to like, you know, accommodate, you know, maybe like kind of middle of the road, like from the beginning to the end of the ride, pre like TCM mm -hmm. update and everything, where the the tour guide still had a bunch of the lines, and then we also tried to accommodate like the people who the other people who were um, taking on roles, like Justin Stone is our gangster and he had said in a comment like I want to do like I would love to do an early like 90s like near opening gangster so mm -hmm. we took we like rewrote the whole script like I got a copy of like the like early like 89 or 90 like script and like threw that gangster role in there and so <laughs> Stephanie's actually doing the 90s gangster um, yeah which is not the one that I did when I was on the ride so it was kind of kind of fun to do a little bit something different <laughs> Um, yeah. But yeah, we tried. We tried to be respectful of all the generations and kind of incorporate. Yeah, them. that's like, awesome. Yeah, because I was, I was like curious myself. I was like, I wonder like which one like they're gonna do because like you guys said, there's like a generation of different movie writers. You know, I did the one before TCM and the one afterwards, and you know, there's people who done like the '90s one in 2003 after the big updates. So it's really cool. And I've honestly only watched the first trailer, and after the first trailer, I was like. Okay, this is pretty cool. So I'm like treating it like a Marvel movie now, and I'm like, I don't want to, know, I don't want to know anything about it. I just want to wait till it comes out and then, bam, watch it and just like sit down. No, like, okay. no spoilers. Well, with that it's being okay. said, it was really nice of you guys to come to us to include uh, the show because we uh, this thing started as uh, an idea to kind of hybrid ideas from the Great Movie Ride with just talking movies. And now that we're, you know, into almost the end of season one with the show and Gabe has come on as host and we're starting to grow, we're starting to connect more to the movie ride aspect of the podcast. And so when you guys had this project coming up and approached us, I was like, this is so wonderful because we're, we're going to use this outlet to unify uh, yeah. everything. And I, I just want to say thank you guys for approaching us. It was a, It's a wonderful honor to be a part of it. And I'm excited that next episode, Pat Dooley was actually already supposed to be our guest. And we're going to use it as a red carpet uh, intro to that evening when his episode releases in August. That evening is when the Quarantine Edition film releases on the internet. So that'll be a really, really cool experience. I just wanted to say, like, this is like, like, I love that it worked out this way because that it's just about, it's about us. It's about the movie writers. It's about our love of the ride, like, you know, continuing on past the, the life of the ride. And it's just been awesome to get to know, like, Stephanie and Matt and Pat and, and Sean, like, and like, and you guys, like, 
that we didn't, our paths didn't cross really at the ride, but like we're coming together to work on this project that we're all passionate about from, you know, different years. And it's just like the fact that like it, we can like cross pollinate, like, you know, go into like your show and then, you know, it's just, it's just so fun to get to work on something like this. And especially in such like a, you know, kind of a crummy time. So sure. it's been okay. something I've really enjoyed. It's a little I, bit like having the ride back. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Just a little bit. And like we were Which saying. Which is why we're like, releasing it on August 13th. That's right. <laughs> there well, you go. And, and that was something that we mentioned too, that like some people didn't get their final ride, you know, whether they left, they didn't know they weren't coming back or, um, you know, various reasons, but people took it really seriously. Even if their clips were two seconds long, you could tell the effort that was put into them. Um, because everybody just, you know, has great memories of, of being there and, and wanted to, what do we call it? Like our love letter to the ride. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. Um, so it's been, it's been fun. Yeah. You know, I think even though you left years ago, I mean, I was done on the ride in 94. You always thought like one day mm -hmm. I'm going to go back there. I'm going to retire. Yeah, that was 100% my retirement That was, that was mine too. That was yeah. mine too. I was Same. like, I'm going to be one of those old couples at the ride for sure. Lee <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. and me are going to be Pat and Joe Bruce. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yep. Oh. 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 I agree. I mean, I, I'm not sure. I, I think it was Gabriel where the phrase originated. And you correct me if I'm wrong, but the whole once a movie writer, always a movie writer, like this proves it more now than ever. For sure. Yeah. I think, I think this gave people, um, someone mentioned about just being the time like quarantine and COVID. I think this gave people something to look forward to. I mean, myself included. Yeah. Uh, and something to, you know, be you know excited about and um so hopefully this will be something that everybody you know is super proud of and all the hard work of the editors and the whole team and um you know we can remember yeah. the quarantine this way right. at least well, we could take away this and it'll be cool to like debut this on that youtube that new like movie ride like inspired like youtube channel like hosted by movie writers that can hold like past content future content um and also like trying to build in we're trying to build in like a call to action like you, i mean we know this is going to get out there like you know other we we've, we've done this for the movie writers specifically but we know it's going to get out to fans as well and you know people who love the ride as much as we do and there's so many of us that don't have um like copies of our movie ride shows but and you know so many people have copies like home mm -hmm. videos is finding a way to like have a call to action in at the end of this to you know send in your vhs's to to us let it let us upload it to our you know movie ride youtube channel maybe we can find you know find that that tour guide you know I'm excited to see the channel grow, uh, and you guys have called it simply "Once a Movie Writer," and the only I think the only video I saw on there as of yesterday was the uh, was the initial trailer for the project, if, if I'm correct. Yes, yes. And we're going to be letting that grow as time goes on. So, can we cool. tell people to make sure they visit our YouTube, the YouTube channel, and that call to action, right? So, the Great Movie Ride Quarantine Edition for the YouTube channel is the seeds, right? And so, you know, spreading it amongst your friends to uh, be able to upload any movie ride related stuff uh, will be great for them and for us. Gabe, do you have anything else before we? Uh, no, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just very excited. Like I said, I'm trying not to get any spoilers. I'll, I'll, be, <laughs> I'll be sitting there with my Thanos mug, you know, waiting like to film <laughs> and just and my billboard on, and that's it. Just like waiting and just, just watch the whole thing and on. I'm really excited and just like you know, hearing the passion of Movie Ride come to life again, especially after its close. And like you guys said, during these uh, dark, weird, and unpredictable times, I think it's going to be really awesome and something that's going to blow up for people who, whether they've ridden the Movie Ride once, millions of times, worked there, or never got to experience and only you know heard things. I think this is really awesome what you guys are doing, and yeah. I'm excited to watch it. 
I agree. And I personally want to say thank you all for putting this together. This is such a cool project. And all of you took this on and just made it your own thing and, and have shared it with all of us as a community. And I can't wait to see the finished project. I'm honored to be a part of it. And I want to thank you guys, but I'm sure you have Hundreds of people to thank, and I know we can't name them all, but I, I, if you, you know, now's the time, if you want to say thanks to everybody, go for it. Well, Bree Baker helped us early on um, compile some of the roles that we needed, and, and actually she watched Finale and sat there and wrote, I think we have a hundred roles just for Finale. Um, mm-hmm. So she helped us early on. Um, we had Katie Fox, who helped um, kind of direct the alien portion of the the pre-show and she she got every clip perfectly (laughs) like she became like the little production manager for that entire (laughs) clip she crushed it um yeah mark Uh, stevens uh, man he came in and like he helped us organize and like he like fine tooth combed the list he had the the finale film list that um like it when we were going through like casting and receiving um, files um, from people, it was at a point where like Stephanie took the morning shift. I took the afternoon shift and Mark took the late evening shift. Like we were like getting yeah, video get uploaded, up- uploading, named. uploading it to Dropbox, answering yeah. questions, recasting roles, reassuring people. And I have to say one of my favorite things you, you asked what my favorite clip like for like that I did my favorite clips, I think, in general that weren't mine like well not like i'm a nurse like i like i love my clips but um <laughs> the second my, best after me no, <laughs> like next best no my favorite clips were really and truly when somebody would tell me they're like i don't think i'm gonna do it or like i don't think i can do this and i'd be like no you can do this like i would send them other like other clips i'm like like they like some people would get like, I guess, nervous. By yeah, honestly, I was trying not to say that. I was trying oh, not me, to say that, me, but me, that's exact, me, that is so exactly sorry. right. Me. Yeah. Um, no, but I'm like, listen, I'm like, it's all, all, like, all skill level, all skill level. It doesn't matter how, like, awesome you, like, it looks or does, or to you doesn't look, it's going to be amazing. And I remember, like, talking to, like, Jason Zonka, who did the meet of the Raiders uh, pre-show, and he he was about to back out. And I'm like, Jason, like, <laughs> let me send you some stuff. And what he sent in return was so far above and beyond what I even expected. And I was just like, you crushed it. I mean, it, it made me, like, giddy happy to see. Like, it's just, like... I, that's why I was just like, come on, just just join in, just do whatever. It's going to be great, no matter what. Oh, can we thank yeah. Frosty too? Uh, oh yeah, for the, for the poster. He, he designed the poster. Yeah, he, it's he a did great a great poster. job. Great poster. A, yeah, and we've posted really that on our Instagram and Facebook, and uh, we're probably going to because we have a little archive movie ride archive on our website just to, that we've slowly been building if you guys are okay with it when this launches next month we're gonna upload the video to our site too just as an additional place to share it yeah and, uh, we'll have it right there with the poster and everything i am so looking forward to this and uh, of course yeah. pat we're gonna yeah. be talking to you beforehand yes and, uh, i do uh, i actually have a couple of shout outs i want to get to real quick i can I yeah can, do it do I it yeah. you're, giving us the, you're giving us the wrap-up signal but uh uh josh <laughs> harris and John Capello have both been huge helps oh, with yeah. getting Josh the Harris, audio cues. Um, I have basically the entire soundtrack to the ride uh, because of, of Josh. He had almost all of the background music from every scene. Uh, so that was a huge help in putting stuff together. And I've actually been texting with John Capello tonight. He is getting me like the last little bit that I need, like squealing tires for the gangster car. So Wonderful. major thanks hey. to those guys for, for finding the stuff yeah. that I couldn't uh, on my and- own. Dang. And Lindsay Taylor is going to be doing yep. the blooper. So yes. She deserves Blue, a shout the blooper out. reel. Awesome. Yep. I'm excited Gabriel. for that. <laughs> Gabriel McLeod has been yep. super helpful, like, you know, giving us feedback. you, Gabe. The other and, Gabe. Yeah, I know. I, mean, I, 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 I'm one of the other Gabriel. I, gotta, I, know. I have to say, Gabriel also, like, gave me, I was like, all right, Gabriel, I need a show off. 
for my my clip. I sent it to him first. I was like, tell me what to do. I totally redid it with his feedback. It was super helpful. Yeah. So. Tim Walzak too is oh uh, man he took on Jimmy. the finale film. So he is he's doing the the edit on that, which is yeah. a massive project. I, I couldn't have done pre-show the ride Everything. and finale before the 13th. So uh, him stepping up and taking that on has been a huge help. And the little bits I've seen in that are great. I'm really excited to see his finished product. Yeah, Jimmy oh. killed um, it. Can I, this might seem weird, but can I like thank people on this call? Cause I have to really thank everybody on this call. Like Pat I mean... is just crushing his work. I mean, Sean came in. I know he said he did text overlays, but he also would, he like, he took, um, he took yeah, straw and spun it into him. gold. <laughs> like, yeah. he, like there was, there were some scenes that like, just they needed a little extra love to be able to fit into like certain pre-show parts. And he just, he was like, yeah, I got it. Yeah. And like, I, I mean, mean it was time. just, Glad I could oh help. man, he, it's been so it, fun. Yeah. Yeah, and, and like Stephanie working on this with you, I, I was telling Stephanie on the phone earlier today, I was like, did you ever like feel like, isn't it crazy? I feel like I have like a new best friend from yeah from all of this we like we never yeah like we we may have worked together like a day or two like our 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 maybe our, yeah our time like my last my last days at the movie ride were like august of 07 and so i was there from like 02 to 07 and we overlapped a tiny bit and it's just it's just so wild but like i just want to thank you guys for matt and pat for coming up with the idea you know and then following through with it like you know being like hey we were like, I was like a little puppy dog, like yippee, like we're doing this, let's do this, let's do this, you know. <laughs> and I'm like, are you? We're we're like, I was like Stephanie, I was like, is Pat actually okay to do this? Like we hadn't even like <laughs> in the beginning, we didn't even talk to Pat yet. We're like, <laughs> so wait, are we doing this? Yeah, Thank you for all the work awesome. that you've put in on this. Like we're really thankful, and you're gonna make. Yeah, I mean, so many people happy, so many movie writers. Like even if nobody else saw this, like I mean, just if it just stayed in the Facebook group, you know what I mean? Like, I think it's, it's just amazing. Like what a, what a light to give to the writers. I love it. Thank Thanks well guys. Said. That's very kind. Thank you. Thanks Kelly. For sure. It is. I, I can't speak yeah. for Matt, but it has genuinely <laughs> been my pleasure. There you go. A well, huge stressful fit. Uh, We're, pleasure. We're going to go ahead and wrap it up. I want to thank each one of you for taking the time out of your night again to, to join us to chat about the project a little bit. And this is going to be releasing August 13th. Um, there's not a time in the day yet, but the idea is, Pat, you're going to be our guest for our next episode, and that's actually releasing the day of. Uh, and cram, cram is crashing your episode. And I. What else is no, now? I, I'm what else? also <laughs> going to be there. Pat doesn't get to do anything in life without me. He's uh, motivating you, and you're and you're around the track. He's he's there to help you because your your vehicle might go off track. He's there to assist you. You know he's got the whole. He's ready. He's so the we're gonna have this guy I standing at the door. Right <laughs> there you go. So we're uh, we're gonna talk to both of you again right before the project comes out, so we can kind of roll out the red carpet for this amazing project that uh, you have all have put countless hours and days and sleepless nights and two and we i can't wait to see it i really can't so thank you all uh thanks, and, and, thank, thanks, and thanks for allowing us oh no no it has been our pleasure thank you for allowing us to be a part of the ride to the release we were excited um gabe said he's gonna have a stanos cup and his marvel pop it's it's gonna be like that for him so well, thank you all for listening to our episode 16 of the Great Movie Radio Show. We'll see you next episode right before the release of the Great Movie Ride Quarantine Edition. You know where to listen to us. Uh, you'll hear it all in the sound off. Thanks for listening to our show as, as always, and uh, we'll see you real soon. The Great Movie Radio Show is recorded in Orlando, Florida. You can visit our website at www.thegmrshow.com. Art direction and logo design provided by Mr. Bayless. Voiceover and intro work provided by Dave Feske and Joe Erickson. You can find our podcast on multiple platforms such as Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and many more.
Music provided by the YouTube Audio Library. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram. Just search The Great Movie Radio Show or The GMR Show. This has been The Great Movie Radio Show. We hope you enjoy your day, and we'll see you at the movies. The stuff dreams are made of. Goodbye, everyone. You have been listening to a GMR radio production.